pre-formation. Okay. So, so you have now heard the concept paper uh, for the title is National Association of Cadetes in the Philippines. So the rationale of the movement is that um, we are in the period or the, in the era of youth evangelization. I remember, I think, uh, three years ago, I was here also uh, presenting the uh, youth evangelization uh, right from the synod. And we are still moving in that towards that direction. Uh, and if you want to see this morning, Bishop Capello was, uh, Cardinal Capello was saying, was presented to us Evangelium Sianti as the Magna Carta of evangelization. We have now Evangelic Audio as the considered Magna Carta of the Evangelization. And uh, in all the six is considered Pope of the Evangelization, the Church Revival after Vatican II. Uh, we have Pope Francis as the Pope of the Evangelization. And if you trace the, the different uh, uh, projects or uh, main, uh, main uh, concerns of uh, Pope Francis, Actually, they really come from the from the mind and spirit of the synod on the on new evangelization. So, new evangelization, as the synod fathers uh, mentioned also in their proposal, demands new catechesis, um, a, a new way of uh, doing catechesis, and this we have we still are discovering. You know? And of course, a new catechesis will demand new catechists. In fact. Uh, uh, we have to really to do some kind of uh, soul searching in terms of forming our capitalist today. Because as a new evangelization uh, uh, brings out the, there is this, uh, the whole change of uh, reality around us. Uh, so even catechesis should uh, be open to these changes. And the way we form catechists should really be uh, responsive to the practice changes. So I, I believe that this is one of the issues that we really have to uh, study as we move along this uh, new, uh, this new evangelization. And uh, for me, to summarize everything about evangelization is simply thinking and getting out of the box. As if you continue the way we are catechizing, that is, that is the way we were catechized. But our generation is so different from this present generation. So we're going to still use the same way of the way we were catechized with this new generation. We will not find, probably one day we will not find any more boys and girls to be catechized. We will be, we'll be somewhere else. Maybe more, more and more in their own uh, smartphone by themselves. So that, so if we talk of evangelization, we have to be ready to get out of the box. And uh, one of the main means by which we can we can help our Catholics get out of the box is again is probably most probably, probably to this um, movement or organizing the movement for them. Okay. So this is to help the Catholics to think and get out of the box and to be a force to go to towards the evangelization. So for the task of this movement, what, if we have this movement, what would this movement do? So if, if you follow the, the handout, the italics, uh, um, those in italics are somehow the principles or uh, um, based on the general directory and other church documents. And then those the, the italics and bold is the specific task that this movement uh, assumes to, uh, to do once it's organized. So the first is nurturing Catholic spirituality. One of the one of the highlights of the civil evangelization is to bring to our attention the whole work of evangelization is essentially a spiritual work. Though we will be, we are, we are doing concrete activities, but then it is, it has to, it is founded on the work of the spirit. Hence, the spirituality 
is uh, an element that has to be given attention aside the skills and knowledge and I believe that uh, a movement like this could help us uh, uh, form or develop at the national level in a way and spirituality common to our catechists okay? so here as a, a as a principal of the Holy Spirit, the principal agent of the evangelization, the primary teacher of the every every catechist, you know, uh, as Jesus himself promised me uh, to the among disciples. You know. So the catechists need to embed their relationship with the Spirit. Therefore, the movement has the task to provide catechists personal and humanitarian avenues for enrichment of the spiritual life. This could be linked to the last uh, part of our current Tibetan's uh, talk uh, this morning. Okay. okay, the next uh, task is to keep the missionary spirit burning. This is very Pope Francis. You know? Pope Francis has always been insisting uh, for the entire church you know, as part of this humanity that Catholics, we Christians, become missionary disciples. He might invented that word. That, uh, the missionary disciples, and so uh, in the and this uh, being missionary is intrinsic to the uh, call of, uh, of uh, being catechist. Therefore, um, the move, this movement, you know, this movement has the task of keeping alive and strengthening the missionary spirit of the catechist members, even to organize programs of issue agendas and new evangelization. So that, that's why I'm saying this is thinking out of the box for our catechists. And so that we are not only looking at catechists for our dioceses, for our local churches, we can looking forward to um, having our, our catechists being really missionaries at, uh, for our churches. The third task is on continuing formation. And this is usually one of the um, uh, objectives of any professional move, uh, movement no? to, su to sustain the, this, uh, um, spirit, this uh, professionalism of the members. So rooted in the Word of God, theology and pedagogy are two disciplines that form the catechists to conduct holistic catechesis. They are instruments for effective catechetical ministry and the catechists need to be constantly renewed with contemporary theology and pedagogy. It is uh, one of the things that I think catechists should really venture into to uh, 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 get into the ministry of theology. I would, I would not only say the science of theology, but the ministry of theology. That as the Catholics uh, prepare their lesson plan, they themselves feel that they do certain theology. So that uh, what they offer is not something simply superficial, but something deep. And they, uh, they become instruments really of, uh, uh, for our Catholic guys to really grow uh, deep and attain a certain uh, level of maturity in terms of faith. Kasi nga, kanyang na nagpansinin yung situation natin ng religiosity, di ba? Very superficial pa tayo. That's why we can come back and speak there, but something like that. Hopefully, um, this movement can, can uh, respond to that need. So, the, the, this movement offers its members continuing theological and pedagogical formation through yearly symposium by ecclesiastical provinces and dioceses. By the way, we, at this point, um, just uh, bring to your attention that this movement Although it's a national, uh, at the national level, we envision that many of these activities will be done at the regional or at the diocesan. We are decentralizing as well. So we are organizing a movement at the national level. The way this movement uh, will uh, grow will be uh, really more on a decentralized uh, way. So in collaboration with the Benevolent Catholic Institution, the movement rose up and formation program for volunteer Catholics to for proficiency certification in doing catechesis. And yeah, even for our volunteer catechists, it's important that though they are volunteers, uh, the formation that given to them 
is somehow a systematic and uh, has, a, has a kind of a, say, uh, uh, a value, a sense that it's not only a uh, collection of topics that they, they, they need because of a prop of a concern, but they really need that the program leads them to a certain uh, level of proficiency and eventually uh, a kind of a professionalism in doing kind of cases. This could be part of the objectives of this program. Then, of course, uh, doing research and communication uh, as uh, regarding the uh, life of the church, ministry. Uh, so this comes from the paragraph 279 of the general directory, no? where the, uh, the directory encourages no, research work in terms of the state of catechesis, religious situation, etc., uh, which we need to do. Uh, uh, if we want our educational ministry uh, to be effective uh, during uh, in these times, okay? and so the movement would assist the Episcopal Commission for Catechetical Education and the diocese in accomplishing this responsibility through research work, writing catechetical materials, and publication. You know, the very sad thing that happened in our, in our the Church of the Philippines, Kaisa is some Catechetical publication that could be considered scholarly. And what happened? Sabalat ng lupa. In Bilchet. That was established, that was begun by the late Archbishop de Gaspi. He was still in USD when he started that. I don't know if it was a bibliograph. And then he developed, developed, uh, and the uh, uh, that was considered as the only scholarly uh, uh, publication on catechesis in our country. And uh, wala kasi nagun, naging, naging, naging parang magazine na siya. But hopefully, uh, with this movement, uh, this could be uh, revived. Then the strategy, the spirit of communion, academic support, network, and linkage. Oh, okay. Again, the general directory encourages the, the number of uh, dioceses to come together and then uh, collaborate. You know? and, uh, in fact, uh, the key word, one of the key word or passwords, we can say, is linkages and networking. So the movement ambitions to promote collab and collab collab and collaborate and, and um, collaboration and communion among the catechetical offices, school for catechists and institutes for higher learning catechetics and other related sciences. Actually, uh, later on, the program of the leadership for catechetical leadership is already the fruit of this uh, uh, direction. And then, of course, raising consciousness, lobbying, and advocacy. A catechist by virtue of baptism and their specific vocation share the prophetic minister of Jesus Christ. As prophets today, they raise consciousness and perception of eternity to a culture prevailing in society the church and influence negatively in the world of evangelization. I guess we need this very much, especially today in our times, you know, a, group, a, a movement that could love you for the, for the truths of faith, for, uh, for uh, ethical principles, etc. You know? So this uh, association has a task of organizing the members to stand up for the word of God as interpreted by the church whenever it's necessary for a secular society to understand right and deep and appreciate better the gospel message. So to, to lobby uh, on behalf of our Christian faith. So, uh, yeah, to conduct advocacy on issues and concerns of government and other sectors. Right now, for instance, with this um, uh, extrajudicial killing, uh, uh, where is the voice of the catechists? And, uh, and the Catholics are, are, are facing young people who are in this uh, culture of, uh, of them that is being, not being uh, kind of uh, spread by government. So, yun. So, so these are the, the tasks of this uh, uh, proposed movement. And then the setup is that it follows the ecclesiastical structure it, must remember, it's a movement that is under the supervision of the CBCP Elche. Okay? 
and then works through the ecclesiastical provinces within the ecclesiastical provinces, dioceses, dioceses parishes, parishes, then families and DECs. That's more or less the um, structure that uh, this movement can follow. So there will be a core group um, that uh, the, to make up this uh, kind of a board. Mm -hmm. And then the members of the movement will elect their servant leaders or uh, the office. The respective Archbishop of the Ecclesiastical Province appoints his representative the core group. And so in the core group, we have the following. So the advisor is the bishop chair of the chain. Then there will be the president elected, vice president, vice secretary, treasurer, communication minister, the PRO. And then the representatives of the ecclesiastical provinces. Well, this is all the proposal, huh? so this gate is open for you. Okay? The Minaka Core Group that will set the direction of the, uh, the projects of the movement uh, per year, or uh, we call this uh, uh, depending on what will be uh, the period of the of an office of the elected officers. Then the memberships are those who are engaged in the catechetical ministry and religious program education in the Philippines. Okay? So, while CAP somehow limits their membership for religious teachers, this movement is open to both Catholics and religion uh, teachers and educators. Okay. And uh, then, so there will be two types of uh, members. Full members are those who are actively engaged in the ministry. Then there are the associate mem members, those who are engaged in aligned activities like campus ministry, youth ministry, social apostolate, and other pastoral work in the local church. Okay. And then there's a question. Um, how about the retired catechists or youth teachers who are no longer actively engaged in the ministry, but can still pray for the ministry? So in other words, how about the retired ones? Uh, uh, are we going to... Uh, Still, um, is this uh, movement open to them? It's up to us not to decide. Okay? Yeah. And so, uh, basically, all members will receive a certificate of membership and newsletter via electronic mail and social media. And then, full and associate members will give a minimum annual fee. So, this is just the basics for the, for, to start this uh, movement. Okay? This is uh, then for you, maybe later, during your group meetings, to discuss and stand come out with your uh, uh, opinions and suggestions and eventually uh, the technical group of HA will uh, gather this and then uh, see how to uh, propose a timeline for the uh, launching of this movement. I was suggesting this, this morning with the uh, uh, Chevalier that if uh, this is approved, we can uh, kind of uh, launch this by organizing uh, a national meeting of the Catholics. Because we have the Catholic National Meeting of Catholics as a local in the year of the uh, year of national year, national catechetical year, then year 2000, the Jubilee year, so maybe 16 years later, we have a time. So maybe this could be the time when uh, we gather as many Catholics possible and launch this together with, uh, with other uh, say concerns that could be discussed at the national level such as for example the use of the yukat, the tukat, uh, so the two instruments for the new evangelization uh, especially for our young people. And again I believe that Catholics should be able to use this effectively as two instruments. So that could be done. Or it could be done in a way by the by region and then the national meeting could be already that could be representative from a from the different uh, So it, it will depend on uh, how the spirit will grow and uh, lead us for this uh, movement. Okay. So, yes, if there are no questions, uh, thank you for listening because there are still other projects uh, coming up. Thank you. Thank you, Father Rene.